Welcome to Trail Manners, the podcast so dedicated to mountain trails and running that they broadcast out of a 78 Volkswagen bus in the mountains. Who does that? Eric and Joel are your hosts and will bring you the trail life as you may have not heard it before. You hear about everything from gear reviews, nutrition to keep you upright and moving forward, and they'll even bring guests into the bus for conversations that you won't hear anywhere else. It's time for some running adventures on a higher elevation. The old 78 Volkswagen bus is fired up and headed to the mountains. Here are your hosts for Trail Manners, proudly representing the 801 with their passion and love for the trails, Eric Manning and Joel Hatch. Welcome to the Trail Manners Podcast, episode number 81. Today, we are on location talking with Eric Storheim. A little bit of Barkley, a little bit of the culture of the sport. So if this is your first time listening, then thanks for coming. The Trail Manners Podcast is produced every week for your enjoyment, and show notes are found at trailmanners.com. Come back often, and please feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Trail Manners. All links are in the show notes. Now let's get after it. All right, welcome back to another edition of the Trail Manners Podcast, episode number 81. As you might hear from the breeze in the microphone, we are outside. <laughs> That's just Joel now. Yeah. Uh, we're outside here at Canyon Rim Park in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, pretty close to the mountains here. We got a great view. Um, yeah. And we got a we got an awesome guest with us today. We do, a legend. A le- really is a legend, especially in our territory. Yes. But you, I'm sure you've heard of him. Uh, we have Eric Storheim with us today. Eric, thanks for taking the time to sit down with us at this uh, aluminum park bench here in the park <laughs> and uh, talking a little bit. My pleasure. Glad to be here. So if, you, if you're not familiar, um, we're going to do a quick introduction. Yeah, give, uh, give the give, folks a resume, please. Yeah, what's uh, trail running style? Give us a little bit about who you are, you know, both as a person and a runner. So yeah. what a, time, to, time to get out of your comfort zone, I guess, probably. That's right. So... Um, Let's see. I'm uh, I'm a native of Salt Lake City. Grew up uh, looking up at the Mount Olympus, Grandeur Peak. Took it totally for advantage. Right. In eighth grade, I think I tried climbing Grandeur Peak, and by the first little summit, I thought I had summited. Oh. The first little fault summit, and then I saw really where I needed to go. We, <laughs> all, we all turned around. There was no trail then. Uh, it was just kind of bushwhacking, and so. Uh, right. It's kind of fun to have that little history. Um, nice. But um, yeah, so native of Salt Lake, and. Uh, you know, uh, let's see, I'm a dentist uh, here in town. I've got a family, um, five kids. We had a, a little girl. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, just Tuesday. Wow. That's awesome. Just yeah. a couple days ago. Yeah, just a few days ago. So that's been awesome. Um, my wife is absolutely incredible, and uh, man, it, it, she makes all this happen. <laughs> <laughs> she really does. It's, it's great. Super, super supportive. Um, I've been doing ultras for, let's see, my first uh, was in 2004. Five. Right. 2005, I ran my first ultra. What was that? Uh, I guess the first official one was um, the Mill Creek 50K, Mill Creek Midnight 50K. Was it official then or unofficial? Uh, well, kind, kind of, of like unofficial. Yeah. It's on ultra sign up though, right? I think it might be. That's official. So that's official. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. It's from we, like 2005 maybe? 2005. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess officially official, I ran Kachina Mosa the next week. Oh, okay. And uh, the 100K. Right. That was my first like paid for. Wow. <laughs> Officially official. Official bib. Yeah. So how'd that go? Just your first... It was great. Because that's a tough 100K. It was a tough 100K. I had no idea what to expect. Right. I hit that 50K mark and was, you know, in uncharted waters. Yep. Um, and then um, I ran into uh, Dave Hunt and Phil Lowry oh, yeah. uh, chasing each other up the trail. Right. And uh, and they told me that, that Ty Draney was right in front of me, and I was absolutely flabbergasted because... Uh, you know, he was like, this was Ty Draney. Like, he was, yeah. he was the man. And I was, like, right behind him. Yeah. And I caught up to him. And uh, we ran together for a while. And then he decided he'd had enough. And I <laughs> hit the pavement. And he put, like, 15 or 20 minutes on me or something. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but it was, a great, it was a great first ultra. It was awesome. Nice. That's amazing. Yeah. So how did you get into trail running? Um, you know, like I said, I kind of took the mountains for granted. And when I was living back east, um, going to dental school, I realized that um, I needed to come back and and take advantage of them more. I loved, I always loved being outside, loved being in the outdoors. I did a lot of uh, hunting and hiking and stuff, but, right. uh, and I had a friend, um, a neighbor who had run Wasatch a couple times. And I thought, well, if I'm going to get on the trails, let's do that. <laughs> 
So I thought, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> good entry point, yeah, right? right? Why ease into it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I liked hiking and stuff, so I thought yeah. a 100-mile race. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. <laughs> it's awesome. That's a great story. So but I signed up. <laughs> but see, in, in 2005, though, there wasn't the choices there are today for just racing and the knowledge and no. information. So you were literally in uncharted territory a yeah. lot. Yeah, that was it. I had no idea what to do or what to expect. And I just knew that my, my friend um, had had run it twice, had finished it twice, and he was both like a 30-hour, you know, and he was a, probably a 225 marathoner. Jeez. So wow. I'm thinking if I could do 30 hours, like that's, you know, that's like top level. That's all I can aim for. Right. And, um, yeah, so I just started running the trails a lot. Now, previous to that, I'd run marathons um, often. Okay. You know, maybe one or two a year. My first one was in 93, I think. And um, and I had a history of, of uh, you know, kind of running just for fun up but until that You point. didn't run in high school? No. In fact, I was a I was an offensive lineman in high school. Yeah, I could see that. And um, You got some big shoulders on you. <laughs> and uh, so I did that, and I played rugby, which was where oh, my wow. running part oh, came into. Yeah. So I played that all through college. And... Um, I think that I think the turning point from playing rugby to actually being more interested in running was I ran my first uh, marathon uh, like '92, I think, kind of on a whim, on a dare, and it and it didn't go so well, but <laughs> we finished. <laughs> and I, and I thought, weird. <laughs> yeah, it was the Deseret News Marathon. Gotcha. You know, so the heat of the day, the whole thing. We finished, and I thought, you know what? I'm actually gonna. I'd like to train for one of these, <laughs> and. Uh, and and go run. I think my longest run up to that point had been ten miles. Oh, you know, it was one of those deals. Yeah. Gotcha. And um, so I actually started training, but the problem was, is I was I was playing rugby at the U at the time, and um, and so I made a conscious decision because my coach asked me. He said, "Listen, we've got some, we've got this uh, kind of like an all star tryout thing that I need you to go to," and I said, "Well, I'm running St. George Marathon that weekend." And I consciously decided to go run a marathon instead of wow. do this rugby thing. Wow. And that's kind of where it, I, st- I mean, I still played rugby. Right. You're still on the team. Years. Yeah. They didn't kick me off. They didn't kick you off. Right. Um, but um, that was the big kind of turning point, I guess. Wow. Well, you know, it's funny. We get a lot of those stories of like kind of did it on a dare. Right. They're, I think that's what Luke they Nelson. They stumbled upon it. Yeah. Right? Luke's yeah. was a dare. It's either right. here's a dare. Oh, yeah. Hold my beer. Watch this. Type yeah, exactly. Attitude, like you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, you since then, you haven't looked back, though. Not really. Right? No. Uh-uh. And, I'm, you know, Wasatch was going to be that my first Wasatch 100 in, in uh, 2005. That was going to be one and done. I was complaining to someone about how it just took over my whole life and I didn't have anything time to do anything. Now, else. were you married at that point? I was married. We had one child. OK. Um, and he was. Uh, he was a year and a half old. Wow. And um, and my wife, I think, was thinking it was a one and done type thing. Yeah, she didn't know what she, she signed up for, no. did she? She's none like, okay, none okay, of us I'll let did. him get this yeah. out of his system. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just kind of, I didn't, I didn't run Wasatch the next year. I didn't even put in the next year. And then, uh, but I, I ran, I, I don't know, I ran a couple other races, I guess. Right. But that was kind of like my whole building Life, point philosophy well back then whatever. you didn't really have to put in you just registered because there was yeah, yeah, just signed <laughs> lottery up. Exactly. Right? Yeah. show up on the start day <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Got> an extra <laughs> bib yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> <laughs> so but how many times have you in wasatch now then uh let's see I, f- I finished five uh my second time it was a dnf i thought i had it all figured out and i was just gonna just hammer it and crush it and after you know 60 miles of throwing up oh. uh decided it was probably done i right. actually i actually threw up a um I've been throwing up so much, um, I threw up like a silver dollar sized chunk of blood and and my pacer and I both looked at each other. This is just after leaving Brighton. No, oh, just wow. after leaving Mill Creek. Right. Wow. And we both looked at each other and I'm glad that he was there because I actually, you know, quit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what is look at that. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. That's not supposed to happen. No, that was not supposed to happen. <laughs> so I so I DNF there and then um I finished the next uh the next four times that I that I've run it. And you've done some pretty sweet stuff there, because for those that don't know, Wasatch 100. If you go sub 24, it's the it's that's the legit. creme de la creme. That's yeah. the crimson cheetah. It is. That's right? your reward. Yeah, and you've done that out of your five finishes three times, two? four, four times. Oh, there we go. So I was even off. So that's 20, legit. 22 hours. 22, 22, 23, 23. Kind of. I don't know the exact times. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In there. 
And that's, that's amazing. That's that's good on this course. That's tough on this yeah, course too, um, in Wasatch. But in in there, you've mixed in some other fun runs like Speed Goat. And yeah, I've done Speed Goat. Yeah. I've run the Bear a couple times. True. You know some, you know, some easy ones. Yeah, because if some one, easy if ones. you go on Ultra Sign Up and yeah. just look up Eric Storheim's stuff, I mean, from 2005, there's a lot, and there's there some that you don't. Re- so there's a couple I didn't. There weren't like huge rock recognizable ones because they were a little bit older. It's like, wow, this is cool. Like as 2005. Right. I didn't even know trail Ancient. running in 2005. I didn't, True. Gabe Joyce hadn't invented trail True. running he hadn't at that invented point. At that point. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. I think Gabe was still in high school then. Yeah, I don't even know he was in high school. <laughs> 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 he might have invented like the Hot Wheel or something. Yeah, no. that time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you've done, you've been around a long time and you've, you've had the opportunity to, you know, see a lot of people get to know a lot more people like you mentioned early on you had yeah ty draney's name dave hunt phil right. lowry all three of those people are they've been around for a long time they have they've, they've seen a lot of change they've done a lot yeah. of stuff so um should we tackle that real quick while yeah, we're here I think let's, it's let's a- tackle that let's what what's your you've been around a long time you've been you know in and out of different types of races what's your thought on kind of where the the sport is now compared to where it was in 2005 even you know, it, it's interesting. It's I've thought of, especially the last year, I've thought about it quite a bit actually. Um, and uh, you know, with with any with anything, growth uh, brings about uh, growing pains, I guess. You know, and um, I think I think on the in the whole, um, it's been great. You know, more people. It's getting so many more people out out of doors, and so many pe- friends and just people that I never would have thought of would have been a runner all of a sudden they're signing up for these races and doing these cool things and right. really, really enjoying, you know, the mountains and, and everything that not just the Wasatch has to offer, but you know, a- anywhere you can find a trail. Yeah. Right. And so, um, from that perspective, man, it's been, it's been really, really cool. I, I wonder sometimes, um, maybe it's just because I pay a little more attention. Um, you know, the whole social media aspect of, of, of running, um, <clears throat> it definitely does some incredible things as well. And, um, but at the same time, man, I wonder sometimes if, um, there's so much and I'm, and I'm not immune to it. I definitely, you know, post my share of fun pictures or your Wednesday you know, wire picture, my wire Wednesdays yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but some of the stuff, man, it seems like it, 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 there's so much of it posted and so many pictures of crazy things that are people doing. I, I kind of wonder sometimes if it, if it's leading, uh, some people into trouble, I guess. Yeah. You know, because it seems so mundane and right. every day, like, oh, they just did Superior Ridge or they did something crazy thing and right. let's go do it. Yeah. And and probably, uh, so anyway, I don't know. I, I, I think it's great though. Um, you know, you're always going to have the old, I remember when I first started and I was running with some guys that had been doing it for 10 years wow. and they're, and they're talking about how, oh, you guys with all your equipment and your <laughs> your fancy you know packs, packs and yeah I held Canteen. it I had a, I'm yeah go back to that. I had a syrup bottle <laughs> yeah that's exactly they yeah. did yeah, yeah. I yeah. had a syrup bottle yeah you know so which is funny because uh, actually on Barkley this year I actually I found an empty syrup bottle did you <laughs> laying like right on not on a trail but where the course was supposed to go and I started thinking to myself I wonder if that was like could have been original Barker. Right. That would have been awesome. I Lost his syrup bottle. You, you could have put put that on eBay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just give it give a name to it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So it I mean, so it's it's great. I mean, just if there's if there's anything that'll get someone outside right. and get them uh, exercising and enjoying, you know, the wonderful ability to be outside, it's great. And I think we've oh. had that discussion kind of the similar thing. It's it is. It's great to have people outside. And kind of what we always come back to on the show with me and Joel, because again, we haven't done it as long as you have, or, or definitely. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've Close. been around that long. <laughs> we've been around a while. We've been, we've legitimately been around that we've long. We've been around a while. Yeah. We still have the maybe the pedigree. We've, and exactly. Resume, it, yeah. Right. That's true. Okay, but I mean, it's it's kind of how you, the people, uh, the change and the morph of it. You're getting more people out there, so right. yeah. with that comes added responsibility. Sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. Whether yeah. you're a race director, a runner. Even, you know, I mean, me and Joel in the process of getting permits for a race, like Forest Service and, you know, uh-huh. permit get, obtaining permits, there's just more responsibility. Yeah. And so what we, we always come across is, you know, where you're at and the people came before you, it's almost like passing the torch, yeah. right? Yeah, sure. And you do that. I mean, you, you obviously do that down in this area because it's such a huge community down in Salt Lake City uh-huh. with some top-notch quality runners and people. For sure. Right? So how do you feel about, like, where we're at with – with those type of things, do you see more potential issues with whether it's trash, whether it's 
you know, oh, yeah. ethics. Well, you know, you've got to like admit, that. there's more just random goo wrappers on the you trails know? You now. Just, you find stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> but you pick it up, right? Yeah, you, you pick you it pick up. It you up. see it. You pick it up. If you it know, hasn't been used, you're like looking at the <laughs> <you're> like, <laughs> expiration <laughs> date. You're like, there's only a small puncture yeah, in it, but exactly. it's mostly intact. <laughs> yep. we're good. <laughs> we're good. There's just this little mark on it. Yeah, we're we're fine. Raccoons, but it's you know that's all right. They're not rabbits. No, not in this area. So um, you know, I actually, I actually um, maybe ruffled some feathers last year. I, I, I made, I made a little comment about trash oh, and stuff. Right. Like I remember that, that now on that's the Wranglers, yes. on the Wranglers. Uh, page. That was more than ruffled feathers. There yeah, was a lot of, was there awesome. was a lot of comments. Yeah, there and, was. And I, yeah, I remember that. And it needed to be done. I feel bad because it. Um, I think it. I, I didn't realize it at the time, but uh, there was a few people that that took personal offense to it. Which was unfortunate. Wait, was that the soda can thing? Um, yeah. Oh, okay. That I rem- now I remember. I'm so happy you did that. What? <laughs> I am so happy you did that. But but so but it, but it comes back to that that there's that there's so much good that can be done. Right. You know, and so and and you know and this was on the the Wrangler page and it's a great group of people, man. Yeah. They do so yeah. many good things and they've adopted the trail down into Finogas. Right. They, uh, I think Logan Ledford. Oh, he um, kills he it with that trash my gosh, thing. Yeah, did his trash thing. Yeah. so it's really, really cool. Um, um, but, but again, with the popularity because um, and the growth, it really there's added responsibility. Yeah, there is totally increased responsibility for keeping it keeping it good and keeping a good image for trail runners. Right. Um, and so, and then just being good stewards of the of the trails. You know, you look at. Um, you can't see it right here, but you look at the Grandeur Peak Trail. And when I first went up that 10 years ago, my first time, and it d- absolutely killed me. Um, it uh, it was a it was a it wasn't even a single track, you know. Right. It was just this kind of little meandering trail that people would do. And um, and now you look at it, and it's you know the the second the lower half of it is intertwined and rutted out, and it you know you look at it from across the valley, and you can see it. It's right. this yeah. big scar going up the thing. Yep. And, you know, so stuff like that, where. Um, it's gotten so much attention and so and these trails are getting so much use that um you know we just need to be good stewards right well and i think there is that that fine line there right far as you know stewards of the trail far as knowing what you're doing and some people aren't aware of what they're doing when they True. do stuff on the trail right they think well it's just me it's yeah it's just me it's, just it's me. not well, going to how is this going to hurt well i mean if you amplify that by the the population that lives here in salt lake and the surrounding counties it it's not just me anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we all have that responsibility and I, I think it was what you, what you did. Yes. It, it caused, you know, quite the commotion, but I, I think it needed to be said. And it, it was, I think it was even more important that an old timer, there's air quotes there. Air you quotes, see, you yeah. see him <laughs> said it, right? Sure. So um, I, I thank you for doing that. But it, raise, it raises awareness and it raises things that sometimes people don't think of. Yeah. Right. You know what you're I mean? Just, you're, you're out having a good time. Yeah. yeah. And you know, there was your, no harm in anything, friends. but it right. is that one, you're kind of, me and Joel talk about this because we are in our little area in Ogden. We got sometimes a little bubble. you have your bubble. Yeah, right? sure. And so you don't sometimes like, oh, there's other people or there's <laughs> other, <laughs> there's other groups. Yeah. groups, right? Because yeah. we, we're in our bubble sometimes yeah. and we think of fun things. And then at the last minute, like, oh, hold on. You know, what could this do? Because yeah. our, our community is small. People see stuff with the trails networks, Weber Pathways, the city, the county, urban trail usage. So, you know, you sometimes you just have to think for a minute. And again, it's always done. Usually, well, not always, but most of the time, it's done in a the best the intentions. Best intentions, yeah, right? sure. I guess. Yeah. But like we just mentioned, at the end of the day, it is about that education thing. Yeah. You know, scarring on the mountain is a huge problem. Yeah. You know, and it's not intentional. It's no. just a trail. It's a great trail. It's challenging, but. That's where the hundred milers sometimes come in because you got to do trail work, right? Yeah, you do. And so you just kind of giving back to the trails yeah. just as much as you're taking from the trails, I guess is is the best way. But because uh, we've had just a couple weeks ago, we had a thing on the show, and I don't know, we'll just ta- touch, we'll just tap it real quick. Um, <laughs> um, just tap, tap, tap it in. Um, PEDs in performance. Oh, sure. Like 2005, probably never even. No, like no, it wasn't even. PED, a, you were thinking, oh, you meant PEZ, PEZ. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah good. exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what is <laughs> But I like PEZ. Yeah. But it's just another example, though, of where things have the come. Growth sure. and of it's, it. And it's going to keep going down those paths. Yep. Oh, right? yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have any thoughts on stuff like that? Does that even enter your wheelhouse? Is it something you even care about? or You know what I mean? Not care about, but something that even touches you like me and joe are like oh it doesn't really affect me 
finishing a race or winning a thing. Yeah, but I mean, the you, integrity you and I of don't it, really care. Yeah. <laughs> If somebody <laughs> is doing, you know, EPO and they finish just one ahead of us. Yeah. I'll give it to them. Yeah. They sure. can have it. <laughs> they want it that bad. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're they willing to be a mid-packer and <laughs> freaking risk, risk your life, you can go for it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I, I haven't really thought about it a lot, to be honest with you. I, I imagine that it's out there with, right. with the growth, you know, um, and a lot of that growth is fueled by... Um, by races that that uh, have you know prize money and right. and you know sponsorships and all that kind of stuff and so as soon as you can start getting that you're gonna have people doing whatever they can and right I'm sure it's there uh, I don't I don't think so much about it to be honest with you well and I think sometimes because I had a comment someone t- we were talking about this and like it usually only matters with the top people because generally it is about winning the money mm-hmm. right and how what is the percentage at any race you show up to of athletes in that race that are even potential for first, second, or third. Yeah. It's a very small percentage small, in yeah. trail running. Yeah. Yep. Even even at big races like Western States, it's still a very small percentage right. that have that opportunity. So it does immediately affect a real small percentage. It has a trickle-down effect to some degree, and you could take that anywhere you want, but just that overall effect, that's why the vocal people you really see with it are more of those top percentage slash, quote, elite athletes, right? Right. Because I don't think about it. I... Only reason I think about it is because I see it on Twitter, yeah, or, <laughs> social you know, media, Facebook, and yeah. you're just like, huh? And I get a text. Jill says, "Hey, did you see so and so's post?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that blew up this last week with with Stephanie Violet. Man. And then an hour later, I'm like, "Oh, I just read the whole thing." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's still comments coming in, but you know, I think it's interesting. You know, that's why I always encourage people when you find someone that's done this for as long and and been more it's success, successful. As successful. Eric has. It's yeah. always fun to talk to him. You right. know, like hearing the stories of 2005. Right. You know, because I remember my first experience with it, and I, I my Scott Hymies who got me into it and uh-huh. i remember just watching him and how small the what i what i thought the community was and just what they went through and like you said with all the technology and changing right and, you know it was like the old timex iron man was yep. the watch you used right. that you know just gave you running time yeah the one you're wearing right you now yeah that's you a go. good one <laughs> <laughs> nice so I yeah, is there anything there's like any piece of gear now that you just that you use now as you use back then Timex Iron Man. Yeah. That one? Same I mean it was not the same one, but yeah. But it's like the st- I mean I you know, I have my my Sunto and my Garmin and sure. I've gone through all those. Right. But more times than not, I'm just wearing a regular old but watch. That's what you go to, that's your go to. That's awesome. And yeah. darn tough socks. That's what I started wearing. That's what I was wearing right from the start. Wow. Really? And I still wear them. Nice. Love them. Wow. I, I, did, I honestly didn't realize that they made They've my, been around that long? Yeah, yeah. honestly. Because you either. get exposed to them as you get into it yeah. more right. and you know, names come up, but nice. Maybe not the first year. But I had a I had a pair thrown out to me at the Wasatch Steeplechase. Oh, that's a good that's a good race. Someone to get to it. Yeah, right. (laughs) It was like like the old uh, garter belt at the the wedding thing. (laughs) Now, do you have those old? Remember the Patagonia Ultra Shorts, Uh the long ones? Yeah. Do you do you still have some of those? I still have one. Do you still run them? Uh huh. Yeah, those were good. I ran in them yesterday. Those those (laughs) those those are longer ones. They're long. Yeah, they're long. long. Yeah, and they've got. uh, Kind of the pocket on the side mm-hmm. in the back that the, I the got individual, a pair of those. like the three gel pockets along yep. the back inside the main pocket. Yep. And yeah, uh-huh. I got two pairs of those still. Wow. Yeah. yeah, those are great. My wife threw out the other two pair because they oh my just gosh, were how ripe. did they? You'd, <laughs> you'd you'd wash them three times and just look at them and they start to smell again. Yeah. <laughs> start walking away. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know where to go. I know what door I go in. I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's rad. So I, so I was I was actually speaking about gear. I was I was getting ready for Barkley, and I was wondering what I needed and um, and everything. And um, and I started no, I was getting ready for Rufa because it was supposed to be really really bad weather this year. Right. And I started pulling out every bit of gear I needed, and I started looking through this, and I'm like, I do not need a single thing. I got so <laughs> much just stuff. Right. You know, like I could. I'm, so do you keep anyway. stuff from long time ago? Oh, uh, just like sentimental stuff. Are you that type of guy? You know, I have all of my race bibs. Okay. Um, I got mine. You know. Right. And um, I think I I probably threw away my first few marathon like uh, medals. Yeah. But I've tried to keep you know that kind of stuff, and I don't know everything else. It just kind of you know you just wear it out. Yeah. Do you I keep your much. shoes or you throw them no, at the DI? Uh, yeah, just DI or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Gotcha. I don't but keep it, my shoes. But am I alone in here? Sometimes when you're rummaging through your old gear and you find that one piece that you're like, oh my gosh, and you start wearing it because it's like <laughs> you wear it again. You're like, I, that was my favorite. Like you're talking about those Patagonia <laughs> yeah, shorts. I know. But I ran across an old, ja- like an old, old Go Light jacket. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, man. That I had a long time ago. I, are they even around anymore? They're not. And it was an orange jacket, and I found it. This was like a month ago. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I put it on. It was the worst fitting piece of <laughs> garment I've ever had. <laughs> but I remember it was my favorite piece for so long. Right and I put it on. I'm like, it was like a parachute, man. <laughs> 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 I ain't going anywhere. <laughs> That's awesome. So, all right. Well, we tackled some of that stuff. But now let's get into the, the fun butter. Right. Before we do that, let's right. let's take a commercial break. You take a commercial break? Yeah, let's do it. Go for it. Yeah. So, what do we have coming up? We have the Ogden, Ogden. Trail Running Festival. Festival in two weeks. In two weeks. And we would love to see you there. Because there's a special event that yeah. maybe you could come to, right? Exactly. So, the event schedule starts at 3 o'clock. Vendors will be there. The expo will be going on. 4 o'clock, we may or may not have yoga. We still have to nail down that yoga instructor. 4.30, we're going to have foam rolling clinic and strength training for runners. Yeah. 5 o'clock, we have the Kids K. 5.30, the main event, the Gib Wallace race. Then at roughly 7.30, 7, 15, 7.30, <laughs> we are having the inaugural Twinkie Two Miler. That's right. So if you don't want to run the Gib Wallace race, we, we forgive you this time around but please come out to the twinkie two miler eat some twinkies run two miles it's the first one ever you want to get on this yeah we'd love to see you guys there so you have more information at trailmanners.com ogden trail running fest.com for the twinkie two miler also there's an official website twinkie two miler.com that's right you can go there for Post more information race. yeah so that's our first commercial break. That was our first commercial break. Pretty unscripted, too. Yeah. We kind of talked about it tell. just a little bit on the way down. We're like, we need to kind of push this Twinkie Two Miler thing. And now, and now we can get, like, <laughs> official. It's like, and now back to the program. Yeah, let's not do that. I, I want to hear more about the Twinkie Two Miler. How many Twinkies do you have to eat? Eight. Eight before you start or during no, the two miles? No, during. Mile? So you do your quarter mile. Uh -huh. No, you eat a Twinkie, quarter mile. Eat uh, okay. a Twinkie, quarter mile. Yeah. Wow. Two miles, right? Yeah. That's going to put hurting on somebody's tummy. That's going <laughs> to. I've been training hard. <laughs> yeah. Not you, running. Uh, is there Just like a cleanup crew? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're going to we're gonna set it up over by the fence line next to the golf course so I can just chunk into the golf into course. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. that's fertilizer, right? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Well, it'll be reused somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Send it back to Yeah. Twinkie. The raccoons <laughs> will be over there digging through it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for yeah. The, for the marmots. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right. So Barkley. The, right. the big mama jama that's just taken off the last few years, more than ever, getting more mainstream in far <laughs> as far as what Which people know about. Which is weird to think about, yeah. that being mainstream. Yeah, right. But it's it's in, it's intrigue, right? It is. It's so has. funny. You see somebody like, you know, a couple weeks ago when, when it was going on, and somebody like, they'll, they'll post something. Johnny, you got to look into this race next year, yeah. right? You, you, you know it. that they're totally <laughs> genuine about that, but then they have they don't know the backstory, yeah. right? Sure. Or you see people post, oh, I just watched this killer documentary yeah. on Netflix. Yeah, exactly. You know, you should try it. You're yeah. Like, no. Uh, no. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. No. <laughs> so we'll, we'll let you, since you're a, a two-time Barkley um, entrant. entrant, why don't yeah. you give us a quick description of what Barkley, what the Barkley Marathon is? like? So, okay. Yeah, so so Barkley Marathons, it's um, uh, there's a there's a reason why it's called the Barkley Marathons because there's multiple of them, um, and it's interesting. Um, the race director Laz uh, Lazarus Lake, aka Laz, um, he uh, every year he gives out a course description and he gives out mileage markers between each, you know, uh, little geographical and so how does he know that uh, does he go out there and do that himself physically well no so or here so here's what happens is that um no one really knows the exact distance but somehow when you add up all those distances that he puts on there it always equals 20.00 miles right huh. so he but he i think he's been he's been physically on every aspect of the course right you know he, he knows but it every year it adds up to 20.00 except for this year it added up to 19.9 five or nine seven or oh, something that dollar like sixty you spent <laughs> you got gypped yeah in. we totally <laughs> got i mean it was it was kind of traumatic to a few people I i'm think. sure it was <laughs> you know? some people are like shoot Sm smacking their watch <laughs> we yeah. are yeah. yeah um so so anyway so it's it's five loops and each loop is roughly um between 20.00 and, and 26 miles <laughs> um, you know, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so that's just kind of. I mean, that that tells you a lot about Barkley right there. Is that, um, is that there's it, it there's no conventional anything to it. It's completely unconventional, all of it. Right. Um, 
five loops um, and you alternate direction. It used to be that um, it would the first two loops were in the count in the clockwise direction, and then the third and the fourth loop were counterclockwise. So effectively, depending on what time the race started, you'd be running one loop in the day and then another loop at night because right. each loop is going to take you. Each loop has a 12-hour wow. time limit. That's right. Um, and so this year he changed it up a little bit though, so that. Uh, first loop was clockwise, second loop counterclockwise, third right. loop clockwise. So that was different from uh, from previous years. Um, each loop, I think this year, had roughly 13,500 feet of climbing <laughs> for a grand total of 68,000 feet or so uh, for the whole thing. Wow. Um, if you managed to do all five loops. Um, most of the tr course is off trail. Um, so you're you're doing some route finding, some map and compass. Nothing really technical or or you know like crazy, but you have to know you know basic knowledge of how to use a map and compass and take a bearing and follow right. that. And so did you, did you have that skill set before you got interested in Barkley? Um, vaguely, you know, through Boy Scouts and getting lost on many hunting uh, expeditions. Right. Um, so you know, I knew how to use a map and compass and 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 do that. Um, and that and I didn't do anything more than just go off of that right okay. and that was sufficient and then the, it's not like the concept of it, it's not a normal race in the fact that like you mentioned you're not on trail there's no markers right there's, there's right? no markers it's like there's no flagging go to the next flag mm -hmm. and like a right. you know trail mark and, it's and and laz will put out a very uh, very detailed and uh, really unhelpful uh, set of written <laughs> instructions as well <laughs> you know go to this tree yeah go <laughs> right to, exactly yeah go to this tree and at the you know at the one that looks like a fork uh, <laughs> with a big rock leaning up next to it take a right gotcha you know. I know exactly what tree you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know. So, um, um, it. I actually pulled my directions out a few times during this race, and um, some of it helped a little bit. Okay. You know, go through that valley, and then just kind of draw, go along the next ridge to the next little valley, and you don't know if go along means a mile or <laughs> ten feet. Right. That sounds like Corey Johnson type of uh, instructions normal day. to me. Normal right? day. <laughs> you yeah. come to my house. Yeah. 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 There's going to be a barking dog in the yard. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, I mean, and I imagine, like, instructions like that, though, as the, I mean, I don't want to say get used to the course, like, you kind of know where you're at because you're sure. second loop, but I imagine it, the mental fatigue, and you're reading your, it could get even more complicated. Oh, sure. Right? Yeah. Like, you can triple guess yourself all the time. All right. the time. Right? Not all just the, the first fresh lap. You're like, okay, okay, there we go, there we go. It's like, oh, no, now we're struggling yeah yeah huh. so so yeah you i mean i ran with you know i've i've talked to jared campbell about it quite a bit and so is, it, is that how you got into it was was jared um secondarily yes yeah i mean directly the first time i ever heard about it was my first wasatch in 2005 okay. and i ended up um running the ridge with um going towards bountiful b with jim nelson oh, oh yeah, yeah he's and a legend and, yeah. he had, and he had just finished it uh in 2004 right or maybe even no 2004 the year wow. before so, you know, he, he told me about this. I just listened in, like, absolute <laughs> astonishment <laughs> for, like, two or three hours as he kind of went on about this thing. And he had just finished it. And just and, it was, and so I was really, really intrigued. Wow. Not intrigued to want to try it at all, but just, right. like, it's you interesting. know. Yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and then, and then it kind of was off the radar for a while. And then Jared um, uh, ran it and finished it. And I started to become a little more intrigued again. Right. And um, just kind of went from there. And I'd bug Jared about it, and he'd say, "Yeah, okay, yeah, let's <laughs> talk about it another time." And yeah. <laughs> a year, Next time a year, see a year yeah. later, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I bug him again about it, and he and, put you uh, off again. And he put me off again. I mean, oh, he really right waited until I was ready, until I was ready, like right. fully, fully committed. committed. To it. That's and cool. Then, yeah, it was great. It was good. So your first, the first time you go over there, you get one loop done, right? I finished. I finished one loop. Finished one loop. Did you get all your books? Got all the books. I was with Ty and with um, Jason Poole. Right. And oh, they were nice. awesome. So you guys, were you guys working together at that point? Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Ty, so, so Jason Poole is a like a world champion uh, orienteering guy. Yeah. Like, I didn't know he was incredible. that good at it. Yeah. We've had him on the show. We have. Because Joel I, I was, was just, infatuated I with was his hair. I was smitten with his hair. <laughs> I, I missed that part of, of his skill set. Joel doesn't remember anything about the show. I was, was just like, looking at his hair. It was like, glowing to the song Dreamweaver. Yeah, I know. I was wow. Like, I, was like, I was all jealous. I think that's some good hair. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, he had a hat on the whole time, and so I never got to it. see it. Oh, it's oh. It's, yeah. it's glorious. It's, it's good head of hair. <laughs> so yeah, Jason and Ty, and Jason, Jason would just he'd like let me, uh, you know, take a bearing and, and right. kind of confirm it on the fly. 
you know, and it was great. So we made a great team, and and yeah. Ty was had no interest in learning how to read a map. I don't think. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was a one and done race for him. Yeah. <laughs> but but he was great at picking out landmarks. Oh, so that okay. was kind of Ty's. Um, that was his set. strong point, yeah. right? I thought yeah, it'd be from translating out. Spanish or yeah, something. Yeah, <laughs> that true. that helped because yeah. <laughs> it did come in the Spanish version, right? <laughs> so another interesting thing about Jason actually is is I I noticed his shoes when we started and they were like completely blown out, like. <laughs> Like one of the seams was coming undone. And really, this old, ancient-looking pair of Montreals. Oh, and uh, so nice. after the race, and he wore them all three laps. And he showed <laughs> me at the end, and there was there was like no tread. <laughs> they were like really? it was like you know yeah it was like a bald tire. <laughs> and he had worn these these this pair of shoes on I can't remember exactly, but Hard Rock, um, Tour de Giant, um, I think maybe Andorra. Yeah, and then Barkley. Wow. So, so he, he was like, getting like a thousand miles out of these yeah, easy, right? Yeah. It was it was absolutely amazing. That's crazy. And then he wore them again uh, at some other rate, like some <laughs> other hundred miler, like a month later. <laughs> I think they finally fell apart. <laughs> so, someone, Jason, needs a sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's hilarious. Anyways. Wow. So that yeah, first that was my first uh, first time. Did one loop. Uh, the second loop we started, and I started getting this pain in my knee. Oh, that's right. And yeah. um, and I didn't know what it was, if it was a meniscus, if it was, right. you know, and, and I just got to the point where I was slowing them down and did I you, wasn't moving. Did you, like, step in something? Did you twist it or just no. kind of old man I just, just type kinda, of thing? Yeah, exactly. Right. I think they, they thought it was a pinched nerve maybe. Right. Because I woke up the next morning, you know, I quit, took the seven miles back on Quitter's Road. Right. Kind of <laughs> hobbled down there. Um, this race is brutal. It was, yeah, I mean, you, it's, it's, you, you self-extract. They've never had to find someone, or you know, sometimes it takes 20 hours, but you make <laughs> you get your get out on your own. And um, and I woke up the next morning though, and my knee was like almost 100. percent Wow! I felt like I had to walk with a fake limp around camp or something like that. Just so oh, they would yeah, believe, right? You know? Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, that was it, and uh, it was awesome. But I never had the chance to really kind of experience the whole thing. Right. And. Uh, Kind of overwhelmed that first time you're there, in a way. A little bit, yeah. yeah. You're like, yeah. holy crap, I'm here, I'm doing this. I'm here, I'm doing this, this is crazy, I can't believe it. Yeah. And you look around at all these people that have just these crazy, intense resumes of all these incredible things Because, yeah, that, that year that you did, that first year you did, there was a lot of heavy hitters there. Yeah. There was. For yeah. sure. A lot of previous finishers. European. Andrew Thompson. Yep. Was a European group that was there. Yeah, that's right, there was. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and anyway. Ty, Jason, Jen Lynn was there. Jen yeah. Lynn. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, Beverly Anderson Abs. She was not there. She was not there? No. Was her husband there? Neither one of them were there okay. that year. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. There was another. There was mm. someone else that had finished it as well. Yeah. Oh, John uh, Feggy. I always mm. forget how to say his last name. But he, you know, he was there running it. Right. Yeah, so there was high expectations that first year uh-huh. you were there. Yeah, and then there was Gary and John as well. Gary right. Robbins and John Kelly were both there. Yeah, wow. it was a it was a it was a stout uh, crowd. And Eric Storheim was there. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, I was there. <laughs> he was there <laughs> for a very short effort. That's okay. But it was good. But it was good. It's it good was experience. a great experience. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Super nervous going into it, and then um, you know, I felt fairly unfulfilled because, um, in fact, someone asked me. I can't remember if it was right before or after they asked me if I was going to go do it again. I right. said. The, the perfect thing would be for me to either finish or get timed out. Right. You know, like I gave it all I had, and uh, I just wasn't able to go any longer because of time. And I said the worst thing that could have happened was if something else took me out of it before I was ready, and that's exactly what happened. Right. And so um, so I knew, so come fast forward to this year, and I had no plans of running it or putting it in or anything like that. And as I got a little bit closer, I thought, you know, I talked to my wife, and I said, how about if I put in – just to kind of get my name back in circulation. Okay. Maybe I can maybe I can get on the wait list and maybe, you know, over a period of two or three years work my way back up again. Huh. And um, I said, but I'm not getting in because I didn't do anything noteworthy or right. you know, or you know, worthy of, of, of getting another shot. So I said, There's no way I'm getting in. And so I put in and I got in. <laughs> of course <laughs> you did. Of course You're I did. like crap. How am I gonna explain <laughs> yeah, this one? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and Brooke was like, well, just if you're going to do it, do it this year because it's going to be a lot better than next year. True. <laughs> you know, so come. So I was a lot more calm going into it this year. I knew what to expect, right. the whole thing. And then a week before, man, like I just kind of fell apart. Did you? Yeah, I was just, I'd, I'd, I'd wake, so? wake up in the middle of the night, like with a full on panic attack almost. <laughs> heart, heart racing. Shoot. And um, 
and uh, it was really, it was, it was really kind of an interesting thing. Huh. And um, so, anyway. why, why do you think that you were? I mean, were you, were you nervous? Were you scared? Scared. Scared. And that's what it all boiled Did you down build to. it up like expectation I and? I th- I th- it's really hard for me to visualize Eric Storheim being scared. Just with everything you've done, exactly. and you've already been there, sure. and you have so, five kids. So it, it, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would scare me. Yeah, yeah. me too. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a whole nother. <laughs> <laughs> awesome though. But um, so it it kind of boiled. Up. I I didn't know exactly what it was, and it was actually halfway through the race that I figured out what it was. Yeah. And you know, I hadn't I actually hadn't run. 100 miler since 2013. The, okay. long, the longest I'd run was 50 miles. Right. I ran Squaw Peak a couple of years ago, and then I'd spent like 45 miles out of Barkley last year. Right. And so, I, and um, all last year, uh, I'd sign up for a race, and then I'd kind of bail on it. I'd sign up for another race. And well, kind of we bail. saw you at Vaquero Loco <coughs> last year. Uh huh. Yeah. He was there. Yeah. yeah. I ran Vaquero Loco, and I right. ran Speed Goat. Okay. And I ran Barkley. Last we'll year. throw that one in yeah. there. <laughs> but those those were my three. Yeah. And I'd signed up for some other races, and I was just I just didn't have the heart. Yeah. I didn't have the mind just to do it. Just not into it. Did and you I, have a knee surgery post post first Barkley? No, it was a pinch nerve. It was just pinch nerve. Yeah, it was like totally fine. Huh. That, that's what the doctor thought it was. It was a pinch nerve. Um. So, but what it, what it came down to halfway through the second loop of, of Barkley this year, I realized that um, um, like, I was kind of scared of the whole suffering part of it. Oh, like I knew. Really? Yeah. So that was what I was waking up with in a panic because I knew if I was going to have a successful a go at it, I hadn't done it for two thousand, you know, since two thousand thirteen. Right. Okay. So it's been I'd, four years. It's been four years. I'd been on long training runs, but I could always just go home if I wanted to. True. Even on Rufa, you know, I did my nine laps, but there was no one else out there to push me, and I'm like, I could have gone for four more hours, but I'm like, nah. What's the point? What's I'm the point? Go home. I'm go I can home. see my house from here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, right. I know yeah. my <laughs> bed's down there. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that was that was kind of the big thing, and it, it it took halfway through, and I finally realized that was the whole issue, and um, and uh, and that was kind of like, you know, turning point. I realized that's what it was. Right. Faced it, confronted it, uh huh, and the rest of the race was awesome. Wow. You so know? that that mental haze was like gone. Gone. Right. Yeah. You were just rock solid on point then. Yeah. Ready to embrace that, give it a big old hug. Yeah. <laughs> Hadn't done it for a That's long time. That's really interesting and well, cool. Well, I'd imagine that race, to me anyway, and again, I've never, I don't plan on ever doing this race. Yeah, I don't know. But I imagine the <laughs> mental side of that is like something that you just, nobody really knows until they're there. Yeah. Because there's so many variables. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just the unknown, even even the people that have done it and finished it, there's the unknown the next time oh, they sure. do it. Right. Yeah. Right. Because it's yeah. different every year. It's, yeah. It is. So yeah. it's yeah. not like a lot of people like, oh, I'm running, you know, Again, I'll run Wasatch 100. I'm going to get down on the course for the race. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to do the last 25. Or, I mean, right. when you do Barclays, it's like, well, I guess I'll go yeah. Yeah. and see what happens. I kind of know what this hill over here, it's called Testicle Spectacle. I know <laughs> that's going to be in there. Something like that. Something like a rat. Yeah. yeah. Some, some, something but with a even dog. the, I know you can't talk about everything, but yeah. I mean. We don't even, want you to. Yeah. And no, even, no, it's fine. But yeah. even before the race, when you show up, you check in. You know, it's got that that mysterious conch shell start and uh-huh. everything. Yeah. There's that. I can't imagine the oh nerve my God, between the anxiety that. Because I know the night that. before a race, you know what time it starts. Yeah, yeah, you, you know what time, time you got to leave get your up. driveway. Exactly. Yeah. It's a nerve wrack. So, so Jared told me he told me a lot of really good things. But one of the things that stood out to me is because last year when we were, I was talking to, we were out for a run. I was talking to him. Like, I'm trying to decide what I do if it starts at this time or what right. I do if it starts. And he's like, you know what? Control what you can control. True. You good know? point. He's like, there's so many people that spend so much mental energy trying to figure those things out. Right. Just have your stuff ready, control your training and all your other kind of stuff. But right. then, um, once it's go time, it's go yeah, time. It's go time. Yeah. Don't don't worry about what time it's going to start or if it's going to be raining or or whatever. Right. You know, be prepared. Yeah. And control that aspect of it, but then just go. And so that was great. So this, you know, so this year, I had all my stuff ready, all my bags packed. And um, what time did it start this year? Started at one forty-two in the morning. In the morning, oh, so in the dark. Conch blew at twelve forty-two. Right, I slept through it. <laughs> Completely slept through it. But somebody woke you up, right? Yeah, I was, I was camped. Uh, I was in my sleeping in the back of my van in the same camp spot as uh, Dale Holdaway. Okay. Um, a, a Barkley veteran, and um, and his uh, I don't know if he did or if his brother-in-law knocked on my window and woke me up about 15 minutes uh. past <laughs> They're like the blowing of the con. Let him right? sleep 15 more. <laughs> he's going to need it. <laughs> he's he's not going to sleep again for another <laughs> 60 time. hours if he's lucky. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, 142. 
light drizzle going on and um and the fog was just like Barkley legendary thick fog. Oh, was it? Yeah. I mean it was the stuff that you kinda had wake up with nightmares about. Right. Like legit nightmares. <laughs> yeah. Now huh. was there a runner this year that didn't start on time? <laughs> Did yeah, I hear he, that? I think he was fifteen minutes late. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so he like got didn't get ready in time or something, yeah, right? Yeah, Woke up late. He's they didn't, they didn't like, like full on <laughs> DQ you because you weren't there on time, right? No. <laughs> it's like he just went and started 15 minutes late. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. let everybody, I'm going to let the, the paparazzi go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you caught up to everybody. Well, yeah. So, so you know, I started with everyone. Actually, right. actually as I was walking up the road is when it started. Right. And that's kind of, I think that happens every year at Squaw Peak with me and some other <laughs> things. So it's, it was actually fairly normal. Yeah. Okay, comforting. gotcha. Yeah. Um, but, um, so yeah, I, st- I started on time and caught okay. up with everyone and, and just kind of started motoring along. So this year it's, you know, a little bit different weather than last year uh-huh. with, the, with the fog. Who So who'd you fall in line with this year? So at the at the first, for the first maybe five hours, um, you know, um, I can't remember who I was running with. Let's see. Um, there was a group at the at the very start with like Jamil, Corey, and I think Rob Youngren was in there. Right. And Harry, uh, Harry or Henry Winkler. Um, and I was with uh, the Fonz. Huh? So, the Fonz. The Fonz. You said that, I'm like, wait a minute. And I probably just completely slaughtered. That's his okay. Name. I apologize. That's all right. If, if I, I did do Harry. it every show. Henry. <laughs> True, he does. <laughs> um, and then Adam Lint and. Um, so you guys had and Heather group. Anderson. Well, these are these are all like different little groups. Cause, okay. Because they kind of they were kind of like splintering and right. meshing, and then you yeah. just keep going. And so I was by myself for a little bit of that, and right? For a little bit, but every time we'd come to a book, it was like, it was crazy. It was like chaos because you'd come because to of the, the fog. Because of the fog. So we get to the first book, and it was in a different location actually. Was this still years. at nighttime? Oh yeah, this is this is one, f- you know, two fifteen probably. Okay. It took us about a half an hour to get to half an hour forty minutes to get to the first book. Get to the first one. No one knew where it was, and um, and we f- someone finally found it. Right. And they yelled out. They found it, and lights just come. It's like coyote zipping, right? It was crazy. It was the craziest thing. Huh. And lights just are from everywhere, and then all of a sudden there's Gary and John. Right. They totally missed it. Oh. And everyone grabs their page, and Mike Wardian is just like, just oh, it's right, giddy, yeah, just was yelling. He? Out. He's like, I can't believe it. This is my first book. This is the <laughs> coolest thing ever. And just like, you know, it just it was fun. You know. That's awesome. And then, um, so we get to the next book. Um, we've kind of splintered and, and fallen apart. And I'm with, I can't remember who I was with. We get to the next book. And again, there's people going all the way up and down the, the stream bed trying to find right. it. And, um, and someone finally finds it. And, and then here's Gary and John again. You yeah, know? Cause they missed it. They had missed it. So that was like that for the first five books. Wow. And, um, and it was crazy. And I remember getting really frustrated because I was behind where I wanted to be at that time. Time It was it due to the fog. Fog. Yeah. Yeah. It really was just cause it was hard to find. And everything looked a little bit different uh-huh. in the fog. In the fog. Right. Yeah. And so um and so I remember thinking, man, there's no way that Gary and John are gonna do this. If they're already st- if they're still on my pace at this right. point, um and I'm an hour behind where I was last year. Yeah. So man, they, they really hammered it and, they and, picked and it were up. able to pick it up and, and do really well. It was awesome. So was it like that the whole first lap where no. you guys were just so the sun came up about about book five, mm-hmm. got light. It was still cloudy right. and foggy, and when, he, when we'd get up to the tops, it would still be foggy, but you could see where you were going. It was much much easier to go with. Right. So from that point, um, you know, I was kind of on my own, a little bit with Adam and Heather, um, up through Ratjaw and the Fire Tower, um, and then... Uh, Is the Ratjaw where all the briars are at? Well, there's briars everywhere. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me rephrase that. Is that where the worst briars are at? Well, actually, I mean, yes, if they had, if they had let them grow out. Um, but Do they mow the, that? They, they mow that cause it's because a, it's a power line? It's a power line. Cut. Okay. And so the prisoners, apparently every year oh, uh, from God the bless penitentiary. Them. Right. Yeah. They'll come and, they'll come and clear them out. Nice. Um, and, and, but there definitely are briars through that section still. Yeah, Was I it mean, bad this year? Were the briars bad? Um. They weren't especially bad, but you know I was wearing pants the whole time, right? So, so didn't I just kind of blow through them. It didn't really okay. bother me at all. Um, so so there's a tip I for really you: notice. first time hard or first time, I almost said hard rockers, <laughs> Barkley people pants. Pants were pants were great. It got yeah. a little bit warm uh, at times, but they were great. Okay. But, yeah. Um, so anyway, so then I caught up to Rob Youngren, right? And a group that he was with, Rob and um, who else? I can't remember who else was with there. Oh, um, Scott Breeden and okay. um, and Megan Farrell. And so we ran together kind of towards the end of loop one. And then it was just 
me and Scott or me and, and Rob mostly, right. you know, with a couple other people here and there for the loop two and three. And he was awesome. He okay, was absolutely so incredible. You come back in the camp, Laz, here's all my, my, my books, uh -huh. all my pages. So what's your turnaround time at that point? Like, I think we were 15 minutes, you know, we said we got into camp at like 10, 10 45 into the race. Okay. And we in said, let's morning. leave at 11. All right. You know, 11 hours. Right. And so, uh, so Rob is very responsible and like meticulous. And at 11 on the dot, he left. He's out. And I spent the next, you know, 40 minutes catching up to him. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> so what? So Which what do you a do? Theme for the rest of the race. So what did you do in camp then? You know, I changed my socks and shoes. Right. Um, did you eat something? I, I I had I I got something to eat. Uh, like something had, solid, something yeah, big. Yeah. Yeah. I had I think I had a pot of soup and then I had a, a breakfast burrito that I carried yeah. out with me. Nice. Uh, that know. sounds good right now. Um, <laughs> We're going to hit that chow truck on the way home. You see chow truck over here at REI? Yeah. We're going to have to go hit that. Get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I just ate as much food as I can as I could, put new food in my bag. Um, what you got in your, so what have you eaten then during that 10 hours that you're out on the trail? You know, I had a lot of, um, I actually made this batch of, um, like, homemade chocolate chip oatmeal cookies. Oh, dude, why didn't you bring some? And, I'm uh, looking forward to the tinfoil. Yeah, <laughs> where's, where are that? <laughs> Those sound good. They were, they were I'd, I'd never actually done that on a race before, and it sounded good. Yeah. And so that was kind of like, I got yeah. a lot of calories out of my, yeah, you I did. probably ate uh, like two dozen cookies during the race. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, isn't, now, now, isn't that so much different with this race than any race you, you do, because you're you're moving fast, right? Yeah. It's a Wasatch 100. Yeah, so what do yeah. you do during like a normal Wasatch year? What, what do you fuel with then? Is it just like uh, light? Yeah, like your gels and your, I try to eat a lot of solid foods as much as possible first, you know, okay. in the first half. Right. Peanut butter sandwiches, bananas, yeah. Snicker bars. What it looks like good that. at the aid station type of thing. Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah. with Barclays, it's like you can full on eat. Oh, yeah. Because you're not gain moving weight. fast enough. You yeah, could. you can gain really weight. Good. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Peanut butter, honey, uh, and bacon sandwiches. Okay. Um, oh, wait a minute. Bacon, honey, and peanut bacon. butter. I'm going to have to try that. That, that sounds nice. really tasty. sweet and salty. Yeah. yeah I'm really good. I'm going to write that down. Chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. And then just kind of your standard you know, bars and right and now you're not taking like enough water for the whole loop. Are you filling no. up at like stream crossings? So I, I just took, I just had like, I had two water bottles and I just fill up at the Creek crossings. Okay. Are you sterilizing those? Or are you uh -uh. just kind of, no, you just you hope just, and pray you just dip them and everyone else has not had a problem and okay. I didn't have a problem <laughs> right and, uh, it was great. Wow. So, but I, so here's the thing, like R Rob had a big, he probably had a hundred ounce reservoir. Oh, so that's a lot. He'd fill up yeah. and I didn't want to carry a lot of extra weight, but I'd stop to dip my bottle, and I'd look up, and Rob is gone. He's oh. not You're stopping. You're spending to move. ten minutes to catch and him, like, right? Yeah, like the next 10, 15 minutes, I'm catching him. We're together right. for fifteen minutes, and then I got to dip my bottle again. Yeah. So I spent the whole second and third loop just playing catch up to him. Huh. Wow. So when you go back out in the second loop, so you're just running that. Are you doing that in reverse, or is it a total new loop? In reverse. Okay, so it's in reverse. It's the so same loop, but in reverse. Okay. So yeah. it's almost like the landmarks, but backwards. But backwards. Right, but backwards. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. And, and so this year it was especially hard because of the fog, right? Well, but by then it had cleared up. Yeah. It was that first but five I'm hours. But I'm saying like that first, that first, you're in the dark, you're in the fog. So mentally you're like, did that really look that way? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. But the, the advantage is that, um, you know, I'd been out there one, day, one time before. This was True. Rob's eighth time going out oh, there. Oh, yeah. So he, he, he had a lot of good experience. Go, right? yeah. So he knew where the leaning rock on the fork tree was. He was yeah, he exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I dream about that thing. <laughs> yeah. and, and the nice thing was that even though, even like when we're climbing up this big, long climb about halfway through on the reverse loop, yeah. and it's starting to get a little bit dark, and we actually took, uh, we, we took a wrong line at one point, climbed where we should have taken a left. And so we got up on top of the, of the mountain, and we're looking around saying, this is not right. And then Rob's like, oh, I know exactly where we are. This is where the course used to go. This is where the yellow Indian is. <laughs> and sure enough, he's like, there's a cliff face right there. And you look at it, and it looks like an Indian. And there's a, a yellow bush hanging over the top of it like it's headdress. Wow. And it was the coolest thing to, like, see some historical part of the trail that right. is no longer part of it. Huh. Wow. So he just, whereas I would have, if, if I was on my own, probably would have ended my race. Would've right. Been freaking out. <laughs> and Rob's like, oh, I know where we are. Let's go. Right. And he just kind of motored along. Gotcha. That just adds a whole new level right. of just challenges, yeah. you know, to think about. In a race, you're thinking about your nutrition, your hydration, mileage. Here, you're thinking about... <laughs> am I, am I taking the right line? Yeah, where am exactly. I? I know I'm going down the right kind of canyon, right. ravine, but right. if I go down this ridge, I'm going to end up cliffed out. If I go down the other oh, ridge, wow. I'm not going to. Right. You know, just little stuff like that. And the... 
when you say ridge, it's not like it's not like a ridge like that, right? I mean, right no. now I'm pointing the grandeur. It's a little bit different there, They're right? Much softer. Exactly, more subtle. Yeah. And you can easily miss that little gully. Yep. Right. Super easy. And you've taken the wrong line, and then the next thing you know, you're spending an hour getting back online. So we're so we're so here's an example. We're coming down. Uh, I don't know the the the, the ridges and the and the descents all have crazy names like you know zip line and testicle spectacle and right. Hiram's vertical smile stuff <laughs> like that. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean they're just they're just great. And so I can't remember which one we were going down, but um, it was me and and uh, and Rob and um, I think Brandon Stepanovich and Jamil Corey and Michael uh, Vierstig, I think it was. Okay. So Mike took off in front of us. He was tired of weight going as slow as we were, or whatever. So he took off. And he took a wrong line somewhere. Yeah. And we were yelling for him. We found out where we were supposed to go. We were yelling for him. No answer. Turns out he ended up like in a completely different drainage, almost to the road. And that was the end of his race. Oh, he hitched gosh. a ride back to camp. Dang. You know, and it was just that one little thing where right. he took off, took a little bit of a wrong line. I don't know if he didn't check his compass. I'd love to talk to him about it. Yeah. Wow. And that was it. Amazing. Just a little wanting to go too fast. Yeah. You know, almost yeah, or, or something. I don't, yeah. I don't know what happened exactly. So on so on loop, easy. so on loop two, it's in the mostly in the daytime for you guys. Uh -huh. Are you picking up books faster because you're in the daytime and the fog is cleared? Or loop, loop two actually was frustratingly slow because I don't. You know, I think I think in the, I think in the opposite direction. Yeah. Well, one, even though there's a lot of veterans out there, and even though um, Rob had been out there a lot, he'd only been on the counterclockwise direction maybe once or twice before because. Um, Usually it's clockwise the first two loops, right? And so he's finished the fun run once before, but most of the times he's like one loop or two loops, right? So going that direction was uncharted territory for most people, even though there were a lot of veterans. I like it. Wow, that's awesome. So that was a that was a fun little twist that Laz threw at us. That's cool. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> so it, yeah, and so I think the I think some of the route finding is a little bit more difficult in that direction, right? Plus, um, just on its own, but then plus just without the familiarity of it. Gotcha. So so back up. So how long did it take to do loop one? 11? Loop, loop, one well, loop one was 10 hours, 41 minutes. Okay, so loop two then was? 14 hours. Oh, wow. So like then you're, you're off, you're off quite, we're a off quite a bit at that point. We're off quite a bit, yeah. And so at that point, so halfway through that loop is kind of when I had that big mental struggle because I realized, man, we're like seven hours into this and we're only halfway through. This is going to be a 14-hour loop. Right. You know? And uh, which is going to put us well past the time of being able to finish um, our third loop right. in the 36-hour cutoff to head out on loop four. Right. So that was pretty frustrating. And and even though I didn't vocalize it, I and and Rob didn't vocalize it. We were both kind of having those same feelings. Right. That we found out after the fact. Okay. Um, and so uh, so it was kind of yeah it was kind of a slow loop. Okay. So you finished it though. But we finished it right. knowing that you know and knowing that we were going to have to um, that you know. Uh, a fourth loop was not an option, right? Um, but that we still had time to get on the third to get to get a fun run in in 40 hours. Okay, so what was your transition like between two and three then? So we decided that since we had a little bit of a buffer, we'd actually take an hour. Okay. Um, and uh, ate ate some food, had a you know pot of stew, right? Some ramen, some other stuff. I actually took like a 15 minute nap, which wow. was absolutely incredible. It was awesome. Nailed it, huh? Uh huh. It was good. And then we started out, and we were going to leave at 26 hours on the dot, and. Mm -hmm. Rob headed out of camp at 26 hours on the dot. Right, so I that's a, at like, it's at night time. It's at night time. It was right. Like, it was, was it foggy again? No, it was beautiful. Oh, Clear wow. skies. Okay. Um, I wish I would have remembered just to lay there and, like, watch the sky for a few minutes. But it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't on my <laughs> mind. <laughs> you <laughs> had stuff to do. <laughs> but it was beautiful. So he heads out at 26 hours on the dot, and I'm two or three minutes behind him as usual. And, right. You know, and, but, yeah, so then, you know, we knew we had to make good time um, without any major errors. But we did have – we had 14 hours to finish – and so we just kind of cruised along, and it was awesome. Was it? We had a great time. So yeah. were you kind of remembering some stuff from loop sure. one then? Yeah. At that point, some stuff was starting to look familiar. Yeah. The only the only navigational error we made on the whole loop was uh, the time we were headed down to, um, oh, I think book 10 or 11, you know. How many books are in? Thir 13. 13. 13 books. So we were headed down, and, you know, we were definitely well within the time frame that we were going to. We had plenty of time to finish. Right. But Rob wanted to go one way down this ridge, and I wanted to go the right way. Uh huh. Uh, he wanted to go to the left. I wanted to go to the right. And I, I persisted for some reason. He's like, okay, let's go. So I led us down into a cliffed out section. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And, and you know, but Rob had been there, and he's like, you know, he's unflappable. He's like, well, we just got to keep going down this way. We'll get there. He's like, right. I actually ended up here in the dark one time before, so we're good. <laughs> we're okay. I know where yeah. we're at. So the one, yeah. So the one bad navigational part was actually mine. Right. And, That's okay. Uh, and we got to the top. We got to our last book. And uh, then we have just four and a half miles of just nice single track, and we had two hours to do it. Oh. Uh-huh. And I'm thinking, let's just kind of cruise this in. And Rob was like hammering it. <laughs> was he really? <laughs> he's nice. Like, nah, he's like, we're he done. the barn, didn't yeah. he? <laughs> and it was awesome. And the whole time I was just like, just, you know, if in one minute, like, oh, my legs hurt and this sucks and, you know, whatever. And then the next minute, the more prevailing thought and, and feeling was, this is the coolest thing in my life. Yeah. Now, um, when you went out on that third loop, you talked about how it was just awesome. Do yeah. you think it's because the pressure was off at that point? I think knowing, the pressure was off. You know, and this yeah. is it. So, And it, maybe this is my Barkley naivety still. Thinking like, we got this made. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know? if we go back to 2005, we can see why he thinks that way. I'm just gonna do this thing called Wasatch. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Yeah. It's only 100 miles. But uh, you know, I was with Rob. We'd been on it twice. Right. You know, we had 14 hours. Exactly. You know, barring any, the, the weather forecast was awesome. Right. And I'm like, you know, we just you guys are picking up books, along. no problem. Yeah. And it was just like we had a great time. That's awesome. That's so cool. That's a great way to have a like your last. Well, where they go back great it's way just to a good finish, memory right, right? Yeah. just like oh yeah I remember yeah. Barkley it was awesome yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was problem with that though is I can see it next year he's going to be signing up sending that letter in no so here so here's the deal um I I actually I haven't talked to my wife about this <laughs> he's, he's, I just <laughs> no one's here but he yeah. kind of looked around <laughs> yeah he he's totally like, looked around she, she's, she's like does anybody do I know anybody else besides these two jokers here <laughs> he's already said he's like so um, I haven't talked to my wife. <laughs> yeah, looking around, is he saying that? <laughs> so, so last year, very unfulfilled. Right. I'm like, I got to do it again. At some point, I got to do it again. This year, like, completely awesome. Loved yeah. it. Great time. If yeah. I never went back again, I'd be 100% happy. Gotcha. Nice. You know, I couldn't have asked for anything more. Right. If the opportunity came again, I'd do it. I don't okay. know when that's going to be. All right. It's not next year. Right. Well, you're um, gonna have a little one. Yeah, I got a, I got a couple little ones. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they, <laughs> they take some take. Two older ones. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, got some time. Well, I mean, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but like with the race itself, when you when you came across the finish and you knew you were done, uh-huh. the finish or to the back, you know, to yeah. Laz and you knew you were done. I mean, you what, got your fun run in. Yeah, got, you got a fun, fun run. I mean, how that? I mean, because the fun run. Let's get this. Let's get this straight. It's not a joke. It's just even <laughs> though you didn't legit. do. Yeah, I mean that's that's the real deal. I mean, how do, you had awesome. to feel that's pretty like accomplished. That's like almost forty thousand oh, feet awesome. of climbing. Yeah, I was like, yeah, seventy-eight miles and forty thousand feet of climbing, and <laughs> it was awesome. Thirty-nine oh three, right? Yeah, yeah. It was. It was. You know, it was. Dude, it was that's absolutely amazing. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, it was. It, it was a cool feeling, and I, you know, I'm I'm fairly stoic, but I I, I held back the emotion and the tears, but man, they were there. Yeah, you yeah. know, I should have been like just. Fist pumping and high fiving, sure. chest bumps, yeah, yeah the whole thing. <laughs> Those yeah. gotta come if I back. Um, but then, you, in the back of your mind, when you're at the finish line, you know that where's that bugler? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're looking <laughs> well, around for staring, him, right? Yeah, he's just waiting in the background. <laughs> yeah, he is. He was eyeing us. <laughs> Isn't that that's how I say that race is cruel? I mean, they got quitters road. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, you I get love bugled it. out. It's almost <laughs> like you gotta have a certain mindset, or it'll just kick you and it'll just you'll never get you up, up, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's the there's the tale of one guy that um that uh was supposed to get tapped out and he said i'm gonna go change really quick and you know get i want to feel a little bit better before i get tapped out and they waited for him they waited for him <laughs> he and they waited took for off him. he like clean camp and he was out of there <laughs> really he did not want to face the bugler <laughs> oh that's awesome he, he's never gonna apply again <laughs> no. is he yeah, yeah no. he's done with Fake that name. one yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> so um so yeah yeah and that was you know that was part of that was actually a really cool part of the whole thing well, it's a part of the experience yeah it's part it of the experience yeah. is getting tapped out and wow. standing there and everyone's around and, you know and right. it was, it's a somber moment yeah. but it's also very respectful oh but it was not like it was it was respectful and a little I don't know. It wasn't somber at all. I mean, it was. It, it was right to, to to some degree, but man, it was not for you. You were psyched. I was so psyched. Yeah, you were pumped. It was. It was really cool. You're like, can you play that? You loud had your redemption, <laughs> even though you didn't get the 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 the, the you know. The I would have loved to have headed out on right? the fourth loop. Yeah, exactly. And myself that yeah opportunity didn't happen. You had that mental whatever. victory. Yeah, total mental. I mean, right? that that point alone. Is totally worth it right there. So th- has that mental victory carried over and, and yeah. kind of like fueled like okay next this year. year this year yeah last or even next year like okay I want to do something yeah now last year I got done and I was mentally kind of fried and right I, and like I said I just I didn't do much. So leading up to that first experience, were you putting in big volume? I know we're kind of backtracking. Were you putting in some big training volume? 
last year I put in a ton. Yeah. I can't remember. Did you come in numbers. kind of smoked? You I think? may have I may have been a little bit. Right. Yeah. And so this year, um, yeah, I don't remember what my numbers were, but there was a lot of just you know, like as far as vertical goes, thirty thousand back to back to back to back weeks. <laughs> you know, I mean it was a lot. That's a, a lot, lot yeah. of early, early mornings. Well, yeah. And then trying to pretend like I'd had a full eight hours of sleep. <laughs> 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 and uh, it, it definitely took its toll. So this year, I was definitely, I definitely, you know, I put in my miles and stuff, but I think right. I had three three weeks uh, total that had 30,000 feet okay. of dirt in them. Right. You know? One of them was Rufa. Yeah. And yeah. then the other two were my last two big weeks. You know, I did like back to back 30,000 foot weeks and okay. took a couple weeks off. So mentally, you were. Still, uh, kind of, you know, ready to go. Oh, yeah. mentally, I was good. Yeah, and I think physically, physically, you're definitely probably I was, good. I was ready. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was good. I, I may have, I could have done a little bit more, maybe, yeah. but to, to to move faster. And that's one thing I learned as well is that, in order to get those loops done in time to start a fourth and especially to start a fifth, a lot of the stuff that I was hiking, the candy ass, you know, trails that he calls them. These are actually established park trails. They're maybe right. eight miles of those. You got to run them. Okay. I mean, you got to. So you, you were run. you were hiking those. I was hiking most of them, on the uphills. Okay, but Whereas you really need to run them. You got to run them. Okay, you have you a chance be able to move a lot faster. Later two laps. Yeah, at the end. right. So these guys are finishing the first loop in you know eight eight hours, eight and a half hours, or something and, like and that. And you're thinking that they're running the uphill. And they're running a lot of that a lot of that stuff. Okay. Yeah. It's not like a navigational thing because you were there with them, finding the books at the same time. At the same time, and that was because of the 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 um, the, fog. the fog. Right. Yeah. But once they got things dialed in, gone. They're done. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting to hear. Yeah. So with when you went to and you talked about like last year how you were kind of you know sign up for races didn't do it was that like a Barkley hangover a little uh-huh. bit? Now this year, now that you had your experience, what's the rest of this year looking yeah, like? Yeah. Where are we going to see you this year? Yeah. Wasatch. Are you doing it again? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Right yeah. on. Yeah. So it was 2013 was the last time. 2013 was my last time. So four year hiatus. Uh-huh. Going for another crimson. Sure. I'd oh, love. I'd love, love to it. five. That's that, so that's cool. That's awesome. I mean, You'll get it. Come on. Well, you know, you, you never know what's going to happen, Sorry. but I'd love to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Get my sixth finish and try to get a fifth cheetah. Come on. really cool. Yeah, that's what? a pretty sweet uh, <laughs> a ratio. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Five out of six. Yeah. But, what? but, you know, you never know. Do you have any uh, anything else kind of before then or else I don't, plan I don't this have year? any other plans. Yeah. I don't right. have anything that I'm signed up for. Um, any adventure runs? You know, uh, Greg, my friend Greg Norander, he's oh, doing. Yeah. He's gonna run Millwood. Oh, Sorry for uh, outing you there, Greg. Uh, <laughs> gosh, I, I haven't seen and Greg in a long time. I haven't heard that name in a long time. Yeah, he's he's been he's been running good. In fact, he was at Vaccaro Local with me last year. Oh, was he right? Was tired of hanging out with me and put the hammer down. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Smoked me there That's at the last, end. And I hadn't seen him before that forever. Yeah, right on. So he's gonna do Millwood. So I'd like to do. Uh, at least part of it, and right. if if things work out, the whole thing with him. Wow. Um, and then I don't know what else. I've got a few things I'm thinking about, but nice. I'm firm. Right on. That's yeah. cool. So so let's let's go to the the big one. We kind of asked you about what was your when you saw the Gary Robbins finish. What I mean, because you uh, you've been there, right? right like yeah. the rest of us, we f- look at that and it's heartbreaking. But yeah. you've been there. Yeah. I mean, what 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 did that stir up with you? You know. Well, so I had I had um, I had left camp to i caught a, an early flight home to mm-hmm. get home to like as soon as i finished my mind just switched i was like family yeah. got a birth coming exactly <laughs> yeah i got a baby coming my wife's sick <laughs> yeah. know, all this kind of stuff right and so actually that night I, I drove down and i called her and talked to her for a minute and then i'm like i gotta change my flight right now and, and for like literally a half an hour i sat there on my iphone like just punching things trying to figure out how to figure out what my confirmation number was on my flight and i couldn't do it like I was so I kept falling asleep. Just on mentally, it. you just <laughs> were there. <laughs> I would wake up with my phone like glued, you know, my finger glued to my You're phone. Like, How did that purchase to Hawaii happen? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. What happened there? Yeah. And uh, so I so I slept and got up the next morning. Changed and by now it's like torrential downpour. Oh. And I'm just feeling bad for Gary and John because they're right. out there and they're in bad bad weather. The fog again. The oh. the downpour. It's snow and sleet on the tops. Oh. And um, but I got my flight changed and so like. As this whole thing is this drama is unfolding, you know, I'm in I'm in the waiting area at the airport. Yeah, at the airport, watching the Twitter feed, you know, and the video of, of Gary finishing, right? Like trying to hold back the sobs as I'm boarding my flight, <laughs> right? Like literally, yeah. And uh, man, it was just yeah, heartbreaking. Yeah, as you said, and um, I, I mean, I don't know what else to say other than that. That that man, they they gave it their all. Didn't I mean, they? they Especially ha- both of them having been there the year before, right? Been on Loop Five, yep. Spent the whole time together, and and especially with that first slow start, 
you know mm-hmm. they didn't do an eight eight hour i can't remember what their first loop was but um they definitely they didn't they didn't take any breaks no naps this time right they just yes. hammered the whole time they were awesome that's amazing and I, yeah and i think the thing i take away from it too still is just how gracious gary was with everything oh yeah you know what i mean i yeah. mean he was just it was incredible. Yeah. yeah. You know, even Laz. It was almost like a different side of Laz. Yeah, because you, you know? saw Laz like, I'm not quite sure what to do with this. <laughs> yeah. I've never been in this position yeah. before. You, know, you could see that hesitation. Because yeah. he's him. always that little smart aleck kind yeah. of fun and uh-huh. everything. And even his comments after when he typed something up and right. posted it, it was just very, it's like, wow, that's like a different side that maybe you don't see. Yeah. Right? Yep. Just because it was like moved everybody. Yeah. And it was yeah. so yeah. rare and just like, like Joel said, it's like, what do, what do we do now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so one of the great things about Barkley is that, um, is that it every year I think it brings out some kind of new emotion or life experience or something like that. That, um, and I and I, I honestly think that that's one of the reasons I think Laz enjoys that just as much or more than the actual race. Right. Is just seeing how people react and how they deal with adversity and you know major things like with like with Gary. Right. And the ability to just you know overcome and. And move on, and and um, I don't know. It's 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 really cool. It is to have those to have those experiences. And I think it was great actually for the for the race, as sad as it was for Gary, um, because it. I think a lot of people will say, well, it's an orienteering course, and you got to like just get from book to book to book to book. Right. And what it really did this year was to find. No, it's actually a set prescribed course. Right. And you follow it. Yep. Yeah. You may get off course sometimes, but you get back on course and, right. that's, and that's how it is. It's just not marked with ribbons. It's right. Just right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because that was the first impression that hit social media was he missed it by three seconds. Yeah. Or that's six what, or something. Yeah, six whatever. Yeah, yeah, six seconds. And everybody's like, that's ridiculous. Or why didn't he run faster? You know, all these things for six seconds. And then it started to come to come out and say, no, there were mileages of the course. Right. And he that, came in the wrong he, direction. Yeah, he came in the wrong direction. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I think that was like the first storm you saw was right. six mm-hmm. seconds and which it would be heartbreaking yeah right? don't get me wrong oh yeah it would be yeah <laughs> right but you can see the finish <laughs> line and he's like two one <laughs> yeah <you know>? exactly <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah when you saw that it was the mileage thing that's what in yeah. the course thing that's when you you know same thing in any other race yeah. right yeah. there's yeah. rules or rules, rules right are yeah. rules um yeah but it was yeah heart absolutely heartbreaking and seeing john finish and his first words were where's gary yeah Yeah. exactly you know yeah so that's what that's i mean we're going to touch on that back but isn't that what's with ultra running in general there's that but i think with barclays more than any race i've heard about been a part of seen whatever it's that you're helping each other you're like teaming up yeah right i mean 100 mile races you'll help someone with a goo or you kind of team up we'll find somebody that's going your pace right flop a little while but i mean you're talking about full-on navigational help and Mm -hmm. waiting for somebody and everything else basically saving somebody's life yeah Yeah. exactly and i think that's what's so incredible about that race is like you're doing it with somebody else and you know when he came across his words gary you're like dude you just wait you finish you just finish barkley yeah you know <laughs> take a moment for yourself but yeah. he's like where's gary yeah. yeah you know and gary when he had his thing the first thing he said on his post was john john you know yeah, exactly. let's give let's him, take the, the exactly yeah the let's take it off what happened to me it. let's focus on the guy that finished exactly you know? yeah that's that's impressive i know that's incredible so you'll th- you'll think potentially could be someday maybe go back yeah not like Planned. Exactly like that. It, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the best way know. to word be, it. We'll you, see. You'll right. hashtag that one. Yeah, yeah just <laughs> someone will figure it out. <laughs> but overall, I mean, I think it's great to hear your story and you come away saying no. with just your just you're psyched about. Oh you know, yeah. Positive. Psyched about by running again, right? In a way. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I mean, you're kind of down and out about it for, was a, for little a little bit. for a little while. Yeah. Kind of just yeah. re uh, gave you a real resurgence and excitement to get back into yep. it. Yeah. It really did. Yeah. That's Looking awesome. forward to it again. That's cool. I haven't done anything since then, but um, that, that you're <laughs> I keep thinking, okay, <laughs> maybe done that's anything. tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow that's I'm okay. psyched to run again. Except right? change brand new diapers. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you've got a brand new kid. <laughs> yeah, I think there's Your a little bit Your priorities are somewhere else. Yeah. 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 It's, right. it's not like you're just downstairs eating a bucket of ice cream <laughs> watching <laughs> Friends or something. Yeah, watching know? Friends? <laughs> 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 and I don't know. Maybe you don't like Friends. I don't know. <laughs> Is that what you've been doing lately? I don't watch Friends. Okay. Yeah. I, d- I don't eat ice cream either, for that fact. <laughs> I-, I eat enough for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I think it's awesome. I mean, I was I was super psyched to see that because we were just, me and Joel were Twitter junkies and you know checking everything out yeah. and to see you go down and do that was that's that was cool. It's incredible. Like I, 
that's incredible to it, me. It's it's been a it's been a cool cool road, cool journey. I and I'm still like I still think it's a, I'm astonished that I even had the the chance in the first place. Right. To be honest with you, because I I think I said earlier there are so many people that are there with this incredible. Well, like resumes. a Mike Wardian. Yeah. yeah, that's a great example. Yeah. You know what I mean? Holy cow! I mean, he's pumped to come back. <laughs> Yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, holy cow, he is. I think there's he is. nobody more excited about Barkley than that guy. Yeah, but I think you know. I mean, for, ju- for if we're honest for just a second, when you say that, it's like be a part of. But you could easily, or we will, since you probably won't. You could throw yourself into that category as long yeah. as you've been doing things, and your race resume isn't like me. You know, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's right. like people could look at it and go, "Oh yeah, this year we had." You know, Wardian, we had Jamil, we had Boone, we had Eric Storheim. You know, mm-hmm. people could be saying the exact same thing. So, yeah, I mean, that's just the reality of oh, that's it, nice right? Of you to say. Thanks. For sure. Yeah. I mean, it's the reality of it. But um, For sure. So there's four. So back up, there's 40 people. 40 that, entrants. That entrance. Do you have right. any, does anybody know how many people ever try to get in? Is there any way to even oh. quantify that? Well, Laz knows. Okay. Of course. You know, and, and I can't remember. I think I saw something where he said that there were maybe... 1300 people that tried to get in this year. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> a lot. That's a lot. Now that's that's a direct um, a direct result of the documentary. The, the right. Netflix. Yeah, exactly. Netflix. The Netflix. I mean it really is. Now, have you seen that documentary? I I may have seen it once or twice. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Just, just maybe seen it and once yeah, or twice. Just to give a little plug for the for the documentary. I mean, not and other than just being there, even being in camp, and not other than being out on the course and going through the whole thing, it does you don't get a really good idea yeah. of right. the whole thing. But I will say that I think that that film does a really, really good job of capturing the physical toll and the mental emotion and strain that it goes through, and kind of the whole thing. Right. It I was, mean, it really does. It, it's a good one. Yeah, yeah, we went and saw it when it was in Park City yeah. and drove home in a blizzard yeah. from yeah. Park City, but it was, like, totally worth it. That <laughs> yeah. was oh, like, yeah. whoa, that was super, that yeah. was cool. That was yeah. And I was like, man, I cannot wait to never do that. Oh, again. I know, same here, man. <laughs> it's like, usually, usually you go to, like, Ward Miller ski films or these trail festivals, and the first thing you want to do is put, go run or ski. Yeah. I watched that, I'm like... No, I'm good. We went right to McDonald's, <laughs> yeah, didn't we? We went right to McDonald's. We're like, wait, eat. Yeah, we're going to eat, we're man. We're going to eat. Screw this running thing. <laughs> so you guys are smart because you walked away thinking that, and I walked away. I was kind of on the fence, and I walked away from watching that going like, you, I, I sign me up. <laughs> yeah. You're like, Jared, Jared, come, Jared, come here. here. Let's come go. Here. Yeah. Jared, we're, we're tell me how to get into this thing. Right yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, so I think there were about 1,300 people, from what I understand, that applied. But there's these little funny little part of the whole Barkley experience is just figuring out how to, how to apply, apply. Right. going through the mental exercise of yeah. figuring that out. And so of those 1,300 people, I think um, th- there were maybe 300 that actually applied correctly. Holy cow. Okay. That's so cool. That, so that whittles, that, you know, whittles yeah. it down substantially. But sure. then he's still got 300 people to pick through. To and pick and he through. Pick through. Does he handpick them at that point? Is that how it works? Um, Do you know? The supercomputer. So okay, gotcha. does the uh, does the selection? Man, that's just that's just <laughs> crazy though. Thirteen hundred to three hundred. Yeah, that's to still 40. a lot. Three to forty. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. three hundred, and that's more than most races start anyway. Dang, now you're talking man. about forty. Yeah. So he picks his initial. Uh, sorry, the super cute computer <laughs> picks his initial forty. <laughs> um, and and that list is not published. Yeah. You, know, right. you don't find out who that is until race day. Yeah. Right. Because me and Joel um, did a show before that, and we were trying to remember the names we'd heard. Right. Yeah. People that and like we missed fessed your, up. Yeah, and we yeah. missed your name. So the next year, like, no, right. we forgot. You yeah. know, yeah. we've got a local one. Um, but then he will publish the wait list. So he, he puts together a wait list as well. So how deep is that wait list then? Well, I think he puts like 60 people on it. Oh. And, and, to, and to give you an indication of how valuable those spots have become, uh, my f- first year, I was actually on the wait list. Um, in 2014. Okay. Uh, and I was like number 22, 23, something like that. And I got up to number two. So it moved 20 spots. Holy wow. Cow. And I didn't get in. 20 spots like that. Yeah. That's, that's half the field. That's really interesting. That's yeah. half yeah. the field. Like just decline. Like, oh crap, I got in. Nope, I'm good. Injury. Or Injury. Something like, came up. Somebody yes, had baby. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> last year I started at number 11. Yeah. And I was the last person to get in off the wait list. Wow. That had to have been like a mental. Yeah, three weeks before. That's a was. mental kick in the nuts. Yeah. Damn, I got in. <laughs> well, <laughs> right? It's like, yeah. it's like, do I train? Do I not yeah, train? Yeah, exactly. Train? And then at the last minute you get in, you're like, okay, I'm, 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 I think I'm ready. Wow, yeah, I was, I was a little too. bit worried when it got close to it because right. the year before I had moved 20 spots, and this year it's three weeks out, and I've, it's only moved 10 spots. Oh, yeah. Wow. This year I think there was maybe six. So you, but you, <laughs> And you never even wow. know who's dropping off because the no. races yeah. are published, so no. you don't know who so you don't decided know who not out. to go. 
That's that's interesting to hear that there one there's a wait list and yeah. two that there's been that much movement in the past. But wow. now, but now it's now. like because yeah. everyone realizes how coveted a spot yeah. it is, right? And you can't just show up and get yeah. in. And some people, there was one guy this year, and I can't remember who it was. Someone didn't show up or, or, or had to drop out at the last minute. And he got in with like two hours before. Oh, that would shoot. Be, <laughs> that would. Be That's rough. like just read that guy's rights right there. Right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man. So, Dang. Um, well, also too, do you think because not just the documentary, but it, you know, it's getting more popular? Do you think you're getting a different field that's applying now too? It's definitely, yeah, it's definitely. You, know? you get a few more. I don't uh, say legitimate. That's probably the wrong legitimate word. Legitimate elites, whatever right. you want to call them. Yeah, you more know? seasoned runners, yeah. maybe. Yeah. And then you're gonna have those people out there that kill, still try. Just yeah. the the really fast marathon dudes. They're like, I can do that. Oh, I yeah. Wow, I'd still, I just can't even fat. Like, now you hear the stories, but when the documentary came and you watch yeah. that, and you, again, we're not there, mm-hmm. but I'm just looking at it going, what in the hell? Briars and oh, god, you know, I'd be scared. No. Just I get Blair Witch Project scares <laughs> me from that still. <laughs> that took me weeks to recover from that movie. I think I've told you that story before. Yeah, I, yeah, but no, I can't do Blair Witch anymore. But that's what that reminds it me is. of, yeah. you know, and I'm like, there's a prison close by. I know. I'm good. They don't come find you. <laughs> yeah, you guys, like you said, you got to self-extract. Self-extract. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Ah, I'm good. Just mark my course. <laughs> I get I get on a buffed single track in a race, and if I don't see a flag, a courtesy Every flag, I freak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, wait a minute, am I still on the right course? These <laughs> guys stopped, are flying like, by me. around. <laughs> Excuse me, did you guys see a <laughs> yeah. did you guys see a rock leaning up against the <laughs> yeah, tree? Yeah, like tree. A fork. <laughs> like, no, there's a ribbon. I'm like, dang it. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I know. Uh, I mean, that's incredible. I mean, congratulations on yeah. thanks. What a great year. It's been baby, I think so. baby being born. Baby being born. Right. Fun run. Barkley's fun run, getting on yeah. the Trail Manners podcast, getting your mojo back, <laughs> getting my mojo back. That's I a like great. It. That's a good thing, right? I think there. that's the besides your baby. That's probably your you know second most important thing this year. Yeah, gets that that feel for being back yeah. out in the mountains yeah. and stuff. So. Yeah, that's rad. That's cool. So I think you know, if, if you're listening to the show, you, you're not quite sure who Eric Storheim is fully, um, and you want to know more, you can go to the MRC. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, the blog. Yeah. You can go to the MRC. And that's how I first kind of like started following you back in the day when oh, everybody okay. had blogs. When remember? everyone had a blog. Yeah. Like you and Christian and yeah. Christian and Peter. Peter. And, yeah. And uh, let's see, me, Christian, Peter, a J. Yeah. All those. Oh, yeah. 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 Still out there crushing it. Yeah, he still was, posts pretty regularly. Yeah, Jay, he's, he's kind of been the most consistent. Yeah. Jay would run races with his shoulder in a sling. Yeah, uh-huh. that's right. He did, He did like, this big traverse of uh, of Bryce. With, <laughs> with, his, shoulder with, with sling. his shoulder yeah. in a sling. After shoulder surgery. I remember yeah. that stuff. Like, oh, Rotator cuff repair. Yeah. Now, you're going to so if you're listening to the show, you'll have to go to the MRC. It's like blogspot. MRC-ultra.blogspot. Yeah, something like that. You'll find it. Yeah. Uh, but there's some we'll really... There's some good information on that blog. There that, is some worthwhile stuff. That's to right. Read Honestly, for sure. that's where I first, when I started running, that's where I first started getting into understanding more about it. Oh, absolutely. There I was met, so I much good stuff Christ, on there. I met Christian through uh-huh. Scott Jaime. Yep. I was fortunate to pace Christian at Wasatch one year, and then just with with you and you know everybody else on there. I'm like, oh, this is this is pretty good, legit. Stuff. I would get upset at you guys actually at times <laughs> because you wouldn't post more. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be exactly. Like, Dude, it's been four days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come on, get another big long article exactly. out there. <laughs> yeah, well, someone I waste. Another Will somebody go running? Yep. Will someone please go running? <laughs> <laughs> Those were the good old days. Let's I gotta, I gotta give a shout out to Jay though because um, he's still just hammering it. He is. I mean, he just like he 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 missed the self-supported Kilimanjaro up and down thing by like six minutes this year. He's fifty-five yeah. years old. Where, where is he living at nowadays? Uh, you know, he was he was in Italy, oh and now. Is now he still doing the same work? Is he still working with the animal rescue thing? No, no. He was so he was working with UNICEF. Oh. He was the like director of I can't remember the na- the title, but he basically raised all the money I think for for UNICEF and oh, private we need corporations. A, we need Dang. to hire him. That is that's a good job <laughs> yeah. right there. So he it's was living in Italy, but I think he's back here now. Is he uh, back in the states? Yeah. Back in Utah back or in just Utah. somewhere? Uh, we'll yeah, contract him. That's raise so some money cool. for us. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I, I think one of the things with him too, I remember he was a, one of the first people I ever saw that ran in a button up. <laughs> yep. And yep. now you see tons of silk Armani. Yeah. Is it what? Yeah. It was a silk Armani. Was it really? So and awesome. he had a Mickey Mouse wrist watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. But he's always, just yeah. Yeah. he's always been just super talented. Though. Yeah. I mean, Especially I, now. I mean, he's I, way fast now. Well, I yeah. saw Holy him at, uh, what was it, Salt Flats 100. I think it might have been the first year. I don't know, maybe first or second. And I was pacing. I was driving. He, he was first. And by there's no one within hours of him. No. Yeah. He was just flying. Yeah, just yeah, flying. I'm like, what the heck, man? Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. Cool. 
anyway. yeah, we'll have a link to that because there's just yeah. some good stuff there. there. There's a lot of good, valuable stuff that you can go back and read for yeah. sure. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, we appreciate thanks for having me. me. Definitely it was fun. Been great. Yeah, this has been great I for us. It. Like I said, we we'll get you back on after Sec- you. Second biggest highlight of the year. Yeah, <laughs> after the baby. After yeah. the baby. So after you, <laughs> after you finish Barclays. Wasatch, we'll, we'll get you back on. To talk to you again. Okay, yeah, that'd be that'd great. Be fun. Awesome. All right. All right. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Congratulations yeah. again with your new baby as well as Barclays. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Thanks, Eric. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Trail Manners Podcast. We'd like to thank Eric Storheim for taking the time to join us and talking more about the Barclays Marathons and his experience there. We also want to encourage everybody to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at at Trail Manners or swing by the website at trailmanners.com. You can contact us on the page and let us know what you want to see, who you want to hear, or if you would like to be on the show. Until next time, this is Eric Manning with Joe Hatch reminding you, you don't get what you wish for, you get what you work for. Now go get it.